Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today we're going to do another kind of right at you video of 10 ways to not destroy your double edge razor. We get asked all the time about, is this okay? Is this okay? Or, or you know, even the opposite. I just got done doing this or I just did this last night and now there's something wrong with my razor. So I'm going to tell you all the ways to not screw it up. Get ready. Number 10. No barbicide. Just say no to barbicide. I know it looks cool. I know we see it in the, you know, barber shop image in our head or at the real barber shop, but it's for this guys. It's for plastic combs. Plastic combs go in here. Plastic combs get sterilized in between usage at a barber shop. It is not for metal razors. If you've ever made a barbicide, you know that it's mostly water and a very small amount of the actual barbicide product. And all that water doesn't just magically disappear. And the moment your metal razor is exposed to tons of water, all you're doing is promoting rust damage. If it's stainless steel, you're promoting corrosion, uh, calcification, uh, jamming things up. If it's a plated razor like nickel or gold or rhodium, no plated finish wants to stay in water submerged for a long period of time. So whatever benefit you think it's going to have for sterilization has a lot of negatives for potential damage to your razor. No barbicide. Number nine, no metal polishes. No. <laughs> I say this because I get the emails and it says, Oh, I just got an old vintage razor and I pulled out the Brasso or the Flitz or the Moss or the mag wheel finish, whatever, insert the name here. And I scrubbed it up and now it's really golden and shiny. Is it made of gold? No, no, no. <laughs> you just took the entire finish off. And now if you want it to be ever fixed, you have to pay someone like us or someone else to go replate it again. Um, do not use these. These are meant for solid metal. If you have a brass banister that the entire thing's brass and it's, and it's really, really, you know, corroded. Sure. You know, sand a little bit off. That's what this is. It's liquid sandpaper. If you've ever finished a piece of, uh, of wood, like a, a wood finished uh, desk or table or chair and it's veneer and you sand and then all of a sudden you look at a different species of wood, you sand it right through the veneer and now you're looking at the cheap oak or whatever plywood underneath. It's the same thing. When you sand with liquid sandpaper, you will go through this nickel finish and you'll see brass and the finish is gone. These things are way too powerful. Uh, flitz would be the only one I would say use very, very lightly, but even it is really powerful for most people. Get a polishing cloth from us. Yes, I'm going to make all of $2 on you buying the polishing cloth for me, but we have them so that you can safely, lightly, slowly refinish your razor without stripping it down with something like that. No metal polishes. Number eight, no dropping the razor. I know that it's easy to do. I know you have slippery hands. I know that you're maybe a shower shaver, but just try not to drop a razor. Almost any razor does not like to be dropped. I've seen modern razors that are zinc alloy constructed like Mercur or Edwin Jagger. People drop them and then the, the cap, the, the threads, just shear right off. It just breaks the threads off. That razor is garbage now. There's no way to reattach that. Zinc alloy doesn't glue back together or weld back together. It's done. Get a new razor. If you get an old butterfly razor like this that's made of brass and you drop it, chances are you're going to bend it. And to simulate that, other than just what I just did was dropping it onto a leather, uh, you know, stylist here, this big leather pad, we're going to use a hammer and <laughs> we're going to show you what would happen to this razor, which happens to, you know, razors we get all the time from customers. They drop it and right around here, they're going to bend the guard. There's a nice bend in it. And now it won't open. It's done. So don't drop it because you can damage it, which is going to lead me right into number seven. No garage tools. Now that I can't open this, I dropped it. I may say, I know I got this guys. Even though this guard is massively bent here, and it's gonna prevent the butterfly action from happening. I got it, guys. I'm just gonna get my garage tools. Number seven, no garage tools. Do not get a pair of pliers from the garage and say, oh, I got this, yeah. I can be this like Madden Razor Emporium. That's what they do. They sit here and they just bend it. Oh, it, oh, but it's not opening still. I know, I'll just grab it from down here. I'm just gonna just crank this down here. There, we got it open. Oh, wait. 
There's scratches and dents and dings and claw marks and teeth marks from my pliers all over this razor now. Oh man, and that's what's gonna happen, guys. You're gonna use these garage tools and you're gonna mess up your razor even more. And then you're gonna send it to me and now I have to go below that mark and sand everything to get rid of it. Don't do it. All the tools in our shop are nylon tipped, nylon coated, rubber coated. Everything's meant to not leave a mark. They're the same kind of tools an optrician uses on your glasses. They're the same kind of tools a jeweler uses on earrings or bracelets. They don't leave marks. If you have those kind of tools, awesome. Go ahead and use them, but don't use garage tools. Number six, mineral oil only. Let's say you got this old razor and you wanted to use it and you said, gosh, it's just a little bit, you know, squeaky. <laughs> Squeaks a little bit. I know, WD-40. <laughs> Whatever you put on your razor, I want you to imagine putting it in your mouth. If you want to take the WD-40 and just <laughs> then by, by all means, please go ahead and use it. I say this because this gets near your mouth. I know I have a goatee obviously, but if you are shaving near your lips and you get some of that nice oil, you know, right in the corner of your lip, not gonna taste very good. It may make you sick even. We say use mineral oil. Don't use other, you know, chemicals. Only use mineral oil because you can drink it. No big deal. It tastes so great, but it's food safe only use mineral oil. Number five, no boiling. I hear this all the time. Customers get the old vintage razor from grandpa or from the thrift store or whatever, and they take it home. I know, I know. I'm gonna clean it by boiling it. And for most razors, it'll probably actually be okay. Like the nickel plated ones um, or a solid stainless steel razor can do fine. But the gold plated ones almost always have a lacquer on them. And the moment you boil it, that lacquer just bubbles all up and you're like, huh, I guess it's just a lot of gunk I just got off. And it's like, no, that was the, the protective lacquer. Now the gold is exposed and you can almost rub the gold off. The lacquer is there to protect it. You took all that off by boiling. Don't boil. It almost always can destroy a finish. If it's silver plated, even worse, you can just color it. If it's gold, you can destroy the lacquer. Um, there's nothing good that comes out of it. Hot water off the tap is more than enough to loosen any gunk. If you're gonna sterilize it, you can put rubbing alcohol or dish detergent, other ways to sterilize it. Don't boil your razor. While we're talking about sterilizing, number four, no vinegar. No vinegar. I know it's a really, really cool acid. I know we use it in our house and all sorts of things. It's a cleaning miracle. And you're like, oh, I got this dirty old razor. I know, vinegar. Well, vinegar is an acid, guys. And guess what? I use acid in my shop to destroy finishes on original razors to strip them. You do not want to put acid on your razor. I have had customers who got back a brand new rhodium plated razor from us and they decided with a, you know, a month or two later, they wanted to clean it with some vinegar and they destroyed the entire rhodium finish and now they're mad. Why can't the rhodium withstand vinegar? It's just vinegar. It's a very powerful acid. If you don't believe me, put a penny in it, you know, clean something metal with it. It will do a very good job for a reason. It's a very strong acid. Don't use vinegar, use other things to sterilize or other things to clean, there's other great products. My favorite, I always say, is detergent. Detergent only, which I think is number three. Detergent only. Grab, grab a big bottle of Dawn dish detergent or palm olive or another brand and use a detergent. Um, if you've been to a restaurant and you put a fork in your mouth, guess what? It was cleaned with probably something like heat, steam, water, and detergent. It's more than enough to sterilize something and clean it. Uh, it may not be hospital grade, but guess what? It's for all intents purposes, it's clean, it's sterile, it's good to go, and it's not gonna hurt anything. In fact, it can take off the soap scum. If you've got heavy buildup of, of uh, shaving soap on here and it's looking foggy or kind of hazy, the detergent will take all that off and make it look bright, shiny, clean again. Detergent only. Number two, you need to let your blade Dry out and breathe. You need to let the razor breathe. So I always hear from customers, they get a brand new high-end razor that's stainless steel, and they're like, oh, I don't know what I did. I, it must be something wrong with my razor. There's stains on it now, it's staining. I'm like, well, uh, did you leave the blade in? Well, of course I left the blade in. I left the blade in with my old Gillette. What's wrong with that? Well, especially stainless steel um, does not like to have cheap, cheap steel right next to it that's also wet. 
what will happen is the wetness will draw the carbon out of these cheap stainless steel blades and deposit it onto your expensive stainless steel razor. And you're gonna take the cap off, you're gonna see brown marks on the cap or brown marks on the guard. And you're gonna say, hey, my $250 razor, it's, it's defective, it's, it's staining, it's rusting. No, it's actually your blade. And I understand how annoying it is to have to take the blade out every single time. So you don't need to take it all the way out, although that would be ideal. You just need to let it breathe. <sighs> let the blade breathe. All you need to do is loosen it a little bit. Or um, if you have a three-piece, loosen the handle, loosen the, you know, the guard, the cap, whatever. Let there be some wiggle room where it's not metal on metal, and if you set it like that, you'll be absolutely fine. You won't have any issues with blade stains. Let it breathe. And number one, no dishwasher. I know in the past we've kind of said maybe dishwasher, and I'll, I'll give those same criteria, but for the layman, I want you just to think dishwasher, bad. Now, the asterisk mark after this is that if you're really careful and you put it on the top rack and it's on a gentle cycle with low levels of steam and very little strong, strong, strong detergent, maybe like more like a normal gentle soap, you probably should be okay. But I don't want to take responsibility for you damaging your razor because you put it way down on the bottom and you had some heavy scrubbing cycle and you had a gold plated razor and it gets completely destroyed in your razor or a silver plated razor and it gets destroyed in the dishwasher. So I would just say in general, no dishwasher. I know it's, it's right there and you're like, oh, it's a cleaning machine. I can just put my razor in the cleaning machine and it come out clean. I just say that there's a lot of risk with it. There is some reward, but um, you need to know what the razor is plated in, what it's made out of, and you need to know to put it way up high, very little steam. I say no steam because some of these razors feature enamel paint, and you can take the paint all off now. Some of these razors have plastic components, like a plastic handle, uh, or the plastic tip down here, like a progress, and now all of a sudden you've destroyed the plastic. So. A lot of risk, very little reward. I think you can almost get all the same results from just a toothbrush, hot water, and detergent. That is all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of rapid fire thing. So many of these were actual emails I've gotten over the years, uh, sometimes multiple emails, especially the barber side or the metal polish. I have to answer almost weekly, it seems. So I wanted to make this video for you guys to have a consolidated resource. Please share this video on your favorite chat room so people can also not destroy their favorite razor. Um, and if you do leave a comment, Tell me what number 11 is. Tell me what number 12 is. What did I miss? What did I not get? I want to know other things to not do to destroy your razor. And if you do leave a comment, you're entered in to win this, the official Razor Important Black and Blue t-shirt. Thank you so much for watching. We're happy to make these videos for you guys. And we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving.